up next on Hudson Church. We have to understand that we will be lost here on planet Earth without the resurrection. So this event, the resurrection of Jesus, fulfilled the scriptures about our Savior being born. Excellent, give a clap offering. And now you may be seated uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? So Hudson Church, it is important that the event that we just saw, without this happening, we are lost here on planet Earth. We have to understand that we will be lost here on planet Earth without the resurrection. So this event, the resurrection of Jesus, fulfilled the scriptures about our Savior being born paying the price for our sins, and being resurrected. It's important for us as Christians to understand this, that he had to go through this. These events had to happen. Nothing that's happening in this earth that we're seeing is by accident. We think that it's by accident, but it is not. It is part of the will of God, the plan of God, and we need to understand this in Jesus' name. Amen? So Jesus had to, and everybody say had to, shed his blood. Say, shed his blood. Jesus had to, say, had to die. Jesus had to be resurrected. This was and is the will of God. And without this, okay, you don't have to repeat that, but without this, our faith would be lost. We would have no faith. I want you to understand this. 1 Corinthians 15, 13, and then we're going to get going. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 13 and 14, please, Nicole. Ready? Let's all read. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Verse 14. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. We know here that our preaching is not, an em is not empty. Amen? Amen? Amen. Verse 15. I'm sorry, no, just, it was just 14 only. Thank you for paying attention on that. So just, our preaching is empty, so we have to understand that we need to follow what the Word of God says, and the resurrection is not Happy Easter. Uh, it is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen? If you belong to Hudson Church, come on, give a clap offering. Don't tell anybody Happy Easter because it's not in the Bible. Say Happy Resurrection, and it's a celebration. It is victory for us in Jesus' name. Amen? So let's look and let's compare today. Can I get the scripture, uh, the, uh, the graphic, please? So the first part we're going to look at, that he had, it, no, the first one, he is risen. Amen? The second one now, Nicole. We're going to look at the road to Emmaus. Emmaus. <laughs> Thank you. And the next one is that he is alive. We're going to focus on three, these three points today in Jesus' mighty name. So we're going to begin with Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. And let's all read together, please. Ready? Let's read. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the young woman who is unmarried and a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with God us. Do we know that God is with us? Amen. Do you believe that, Hudson Church? Amen. Amen. Next sign, next verse, uh, Matthew 1, verse 18, and look what happens. We need to know this about, uh, for our foundation. Ready? Let's read. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place under these circumstances. When his mother Mary had been promised in marriage to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the power of of the Holy Spirit. Verse 19. And her promised husband, Joseph, being a just and upright man and not willing to expose her publicly and to shame and disgrace her, he decided to repudiate and dismiss, divorce her quietly and secretly. Verse 20. But as he was thinking this over, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Hudson Church, do angels appear to you? Are your dreams important? Yes. It's important to know how to discern your dreams, whether it's indigestion or whether it's a dream from God. 
Amen? Amen. 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 Let's keep on reading. Saying, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of, from, out of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, the Greek form of the Hebrew Joshua, which means Savior. Did you know that the name Jesus means Savior? Amen. You don't know what these things mean in order for you to have power in your faith in 2024. Amen. Keep on going. For he will save his people from what? From their sins. That is, prevent them from failing and missing the true end and scope of life, which is God. Verse 22. All this took place that it might be fulfilled, which the Lord had spoken through the prophets. Verse 23. Behold, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which we translate it means God with us. So we need these things had to happen. And now, sometimes we think that the Romans took advantage of Jesus or the Jewish uh, uh, religious leaders, but Jesus knew that he had to give up his life. No one took it away. He gave it up. If you were here during the week, we saw that Jesus has the power to destroy planet Earth if he wanted to, that he has legions of angels available at his disposal, and that the Word of God, we're not going to do it today, says that he could have summoned 80,000 legions of angels, I'm sorry, 80,000 angels that would have destroyed to come to rescue him, but he was a living sacrifice for you and for me. Amen. Amen. So John 10, 14. Let's all read together. Ready? I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. Verse 15. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. He lays it down willingly for you. Do you understand that? When you're at home and you don't want to come to church, when you don't want to pray, do you know what you're saying by that? You don't care what he did for you, and we need to stop that in 2024. Amen? When you're mad at a brother, when you're mad at someone and you have unforgiveness and you don't want to come because I don't want to see that person or hear from them, you got to stop that in 2024 in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 16, look what it says. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will what? Hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Verse 17. Therefore, my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Verse 18, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. Do you understand that? He lays it down of, of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. Amen. So he knew that he had to go down, that he had to give up his life. He knew that in those three days and three nights, he went down to hell to take away the keys of death so that he can conquer death for us. So in 2024, when we're afraid of death, we don't understand as being a Christian who the power that we have living within us, and we need to open up our hearts to receive this in Jesus' name. Amen. So he is risen. Look at someone and tell him, He is risen. It is the truth. I am not lying to you. He is risen. Do you believe that, Hudson Church? You know why I say this in this manner? And the Holy Spirit had me do it? Because in those days when it happened, the disciples didn't believe it. And they said, stop lying. And that's why it could still be happening in 2024. Look what happens. Luke chapter 24, verse 1. Let's all read together, please. Ready? But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women, thank God for women here at Hudson Church. Amen? <laughs> women, you should be shouting up. Let's go, women. Okay. You know where the men were? Sleeping or hiding or watching football. Okay? So, but, uh, so the women went to the tomb. And what happened? Taking the spices which they had made ready. Verse 2. And they found the stone rolled back from the tomb, which what we saw. Verse 3. But when they went inside, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Okay, verse 4. And while they were perplexed 
and wondering what to do about this, behold, two men in dazzling raiment suddenly stood besides them, being angels, okay? Are angels real? Some of you do not believe in the power of angels and angels exist, and they are real in 2024 in Jesus' name. Amen? Verse, uh, verse 5. And as the women were frightened and were bowing their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you look for the living among those who are dead? Ask him a question. Verse 6. He is not here, but has risen. Amen. Come on. He has risen. Amen. And look what he's reminding them. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee. Verse 7. That the Son of Man must be given over into the hands of sinful men, men whose way or nature is to act in opposition to God and be crucified and on the third day rise from death. Verse 8. And they remembered his words. Amen. Verse 8 says they remembered their words. You know what that means before? They forgot him. The same way here we might remember right now, but a little while you might forget what we're teaching you. And that's why here at Hudson Church we do repetition and keep on repeating the lessons so that you get it deep into your hearts and souls in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? If you have the attitude, I heard that already. You probably don't know what you're talking about. Because those who think, I heard that already, you would not be saying that because this is called the living word. This is, oh, you got to continually read this word, continually read this word in Jesus' name. Amen? It is important, Hudson Church. Verse 9, look what it says. And having returned from the tomb, they reported all these things, taken together to who? To the eleven apostles and to all the rest. So they gave him a report, and look what happened, verse 10. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Jonah and Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman with them who reported these things to the apostles. Verse 11. But these reports seemed to men an idle tale, madness, feigned things, nonsense, and they did not believe the women. These are the 11 disciples. The apostles that, uh, that were there with the Lord Jesus for three and a half years, hearing this from the master, and they didn't believe it. That's why it's important for us to continually to repeat this, which is what the Holy Spirit told me to do this today in Jesus' name. Amen? Verse 12. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, and stooping down and looking in, he saw the linen cloth alone by themselves, and he went away wandering about and marveling at what had happened. So Hudson Church, this is something that we need to believe. It is important to us that we believe in the resurrection because if he has not been resurrected, then our lives are here. We're just lost here, but thank God that we are not lost, that all the promises of God are yes and amen, and we can rely on his promises that his word is true for our lives in 2024 in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So now we're going to look at Lord Jesus on a date like today after the resurrection, how he spoke to two disciples. So the road, uh, give me now Luke 24, verse 13. Let's all read. Ready? And behold, that very day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus. I want to see who got it right. Emmaus, which is about seven miles from Jerusalem. Okay? Verse 14. And they were talking with each other all these things, about all these things that are occurred. So they're conversing. They just witnessed this a uh, day before, okay, three days before. Verse, uh, next, verse 15. And while they were conversing and discussing together, Jesus himself caught up with them and was already accompanying them. How many would you like for Jesus to start walking with you? Did he do that? How many of you read this and, and never realized this? All right. Jesus himself caught up with them and was already accompanying them. Verse 16, look what happens. But their eyes were held so that they did not recognize him. They didn't even recognize Jesus. Okay, verse 17. And he said to them, what is this discussion that you are exchanging, throwing back and forth between yourselves as you walk along? And they stood still. Sad, looking sad and downcast. Okay, verse 18. Then one of them named Clephas answered him, Do you alone dwell as a stranger in Jerusalem and not know the things that have occurred there in these days? He's like reprimanding them. He's reprimanding Jesus. 
And Jesus, did Jesus know what happened? Yes, but he's asking us to see if we really know what happens. Okay, verse 19, everybody. And he said to them, what kind of things? And they said to him about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in work and word before God and all the people. Did they call him the king of kings? Did they call him the son of God? No, they called him a prophet. And, and uh, he did mighty works. So again, they didn't understand all the things that he was teaching them for three and a half years. Verse 20. And how our chief priests and rulers gave him up to be sentenced to death and crucified him. 21. But we were hoping that it was he who would redeem and set Israel free. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things occurred. Verse 22. And moreover, some women of our company astounded us and drove us out of our senses. Stop right there. Can some women astound you? Yes. Can some women drive you out of your senses? Yes. Oh, I got more in the second one in regards to that, okay? <laughs> We're here celebrating. Some of you are too serious. Today is a celebration of the resurrection of our Lord yes. Jesus the Christ. Get over yourselves and enjoy this in Jesus' name. Amen? So what happened? They were at the tomb early in the morning. And look what happened, 23. But did not find his body. And they returned saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. 24. So some of those who were with us went to the tomb. And they found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. Verse 25. And Jesus said to them, again he spoke to them, O oh, foolish ones, sluggish in mind, dull of perception, and slow of heart to believe, adhere to, and trust in, and rely on everything that the prophets had spoken. He's reprimanding them. Stop being such hard-hearted people and choose to believe what the word of God says for your lives in Jesus' name. Amen? Come on, Hudson Church. we got to believe in Jesus' name. Verse 26, look what it says. Was it not necessary and essentially fitting that Christ, the Messiah, should suffer all these things before entering into his glory, his majesty, and his splendor? Verse 27. Then beginning with Moses and throughout all the prophets, he went on explaining and interpreting to them in all the scriptures the things concerning and referring to himself. He gave them a Bible study. Hudson Church TV app brings you live services direct to your smartphone, smart TV, and much more. You'll also get special announcements, streaming messages, and exclusive content 24 hours a day, right in the app. Experience unlimited streaming through streaming platforms absolutely free. Visit your app store or download the Hudson Church app through PushPay. For more information, go to facebook.com forward slash the Hudson Church. Along the road to uh, right there. He just came up from Moses to, to the prophets. He was speaking to them about us. That's why we got to read the scriptures, Hudson Church. I need to keep on emphasizing this in our life. If you want power, if you want to live defeated lives, then don't read the scriptures. But you need to learn and study and meditate on the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen? Let's keep on reading. 28. Look what it says. Then they drew near the village to which they were going, and he acted as if he would go further. Next verse. But they urged and insisted, saying to him, Remain with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. 30. And it occurred that as he reclined at the table with them, he took a loaf of bread and praised God and gave thanks and asked the blessing and then broke it and was giving it to them. Verse 31. When their eyes were instantly opened, and they clearly recognized him, and he vanished, departed invisibly. When we do communion observance, it's to open up your eyes to the words of God. Some of you just take it, don't understand the power that we're doing through the Lord's Supper. And you see, they took the Lord's Supper, and their eyes were open, and they saw him. But look at the spiritual body that we're all going to receive one day, that he just vanished from in front of their eyes. And look what happened, verse 32, and look what they said. Let's all read together, please. And they said to one another, 
Were not our hearts greatly moved and burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and as he opened and explained to us the sense of the scriptures? How's the church? When we're reading the word of God, something should be occurring in our hearts. And if it's not, ask God, God, remove this stony heart from me, this hardened heart. Because I know through the pressures of life, your hearts get hardened. From people messing with you, abandoning you, hurting you, you don't want to believe these scriptures. And we need to have a soft and fleshy heart to receive the promises of God in Jesus' name. Amen? You can ask God, God created me a clean heart, a soft heart, a heart of flesh. And I promise you, he will give it to you today in Jesus' name. Do you receive that, Hudson Church? Amen? Come on, Hudson Church. We need this. Amen? Verse 33, look what it says. And rising up at that very hour, they went back to Jerusalem, where they found the 11 apostles gathered together and those who were with them. Next one. Who said, the Lord really has risen and has appeared to Simon Peter. Say, Man, it is true. Verse 35. Then they, th then they themselves related in full what had happened on the road and, know, and how he was known and recognized by them in the breaking of bread. Communion is powerful, Hudson Church, in Jesus' name. Amen? Verse 36. Now, when they were talking about this, Jesus himself took his stand among them and said to them, Peace, freedom from all distresses that are experienced as a result of sin be to you. So now he was speaking, and now, once again, he appeared in the middle of them. He didn't go through the walls. He didn't go through the door. I'm sorry, he went through the walls. He didn't go through the front door. He just appeared in there with them in Jesus' name. Amen? So right now, as we're speaking, Jesus could appear right next to you. You know what? He is right next to you right now because we're talking about him in Jesus' name. I'm not talking about myself. We're talking about Jesus. Amen? The Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now in Jesus' name. Verse 37. But they were so startled and terrified that they thought they saw a spirit. And look what happens, verse 38. And he said to them, why are you so disturbed and troubled? And why do you, such doubts and questionings arise where? In your hearts. 39. See my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Feel and handle me and see, for the spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. So your new bodies, even though they can go through walls and disappear, are also going to have flesh and bones. Think about that. That's our new celestial bodies that every single one of us that has Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior is going to possess in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Next verse, verse 40. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and he showed them his feet. 41. And while, since they still could not believe it for sheer joy and marveled, he said to them, have you anything to eat? So for those of you who like to eat in heaven, we're going to be eating. But no gaining weight. That's good news in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, anything to eat? This is Lord Jesus. All right. Verse 42. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. Okay, verse 43, and he took it and he ate it before them, 44. Then he said to them, this is what I told you while I was with you. Everything which is written concerning me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Amen, verse 45. Then he thoroughly, what did he do again? Opened up their minds to understand the scripture. Everybody repeat with me, God. Thoroughly open up my mind, open up my heart, so that I may understand the scriptures in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Verse 46. And, and said to them, this, thus it is written that the Christ, the Messiah, should suffer and on the third day rise from among the dead. Verse 47. And that repentance with a, with a view to and as the condition of forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Hudson Church, do you know that you're forgiven if you have Christ? Look at someone tell them, you're forgiven. Receive mercy. Receive forgiveness in Jesus' name. 
Stop beating yourself up for that mess up that we all have done in the past and receive that love and forgiveness right now in Jesus' name. Receive it. Some of you are, 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 bad, you know, are, are crucifying yourselves with that mess up that you did, that you can't undo it, but God has paid the price for you and for me in Jesus' name. That's the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Verse 48. You are witnesses of these things. 49. And behold, I will send forth upon you what my Father has promised, but remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are closed with power from on high. That power is the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, verse 50. Verse 50. Then he conducted them out as far as Bethany, and, lift, and lifting up his hands, he invoked a blessing on them. So when you do a blessing, you lift up hands to impose a blessing on people in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 51. And it occurred that while he was blessing them, he parted from them and was taken up into heaven, right in front of their eyes. Verse 52, and they, and they, worshiping him, went back to Jerusalem. How? With great joy. Be joyful today and every day in Jesus' name. Amen? And last verse, verse 53, and they were continually in the temple doing what? Celebrating with praises and blessing and extolling God. Amen. So be it. Amen, Hudson Church? So how to church, this is the foundation. This is the rock of our faith in the Christ. Okay, it is time, it is true, Hudson Church, that Jesus is risen. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. Hudson Church, it is true that uh, you were, when you read the scriptures about him, that your heart should be burning with, with, uh, with love in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen on that? Hudson Church, the scriptures are now open to us through the Holy Spirit because of the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. Hudson Church, this means that Jesus obtained the victory over death for you and for me. Do you believe that? Death should no longer control us. No more fear of death. Look at someone tell them, stop that fear of dying. Stop it. Okay, Jesus has stripped all of the power of Satan and given it to us, all the authority to trample upon all the power of the devil and his demons in Jesus' name. You already have the power. Tell someone, I got the power. Amen. Luke 10, 19. Come on, I want you to re see this. Luke 10, 19. Ready? Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall in any way harm you, Hutchinson Church. Do you believe this? Come on, verse 20. Look what it says. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits are subject to you. But rejoice that your names are enrolled in heaven. If your name is not enrolled in heaven tonight, you, now you're going to have an opportunity to have your name enrolled in heaven. Amen? So because of the, the resurrection of Jesus, we now have access to eternal life with God. Do you understand that? It's because of Jesus. Amen. That sister's got it. Thank you, my sister, for shouting out that name. John 11:25. please. John 11:25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Do you believe this, Hudson Church? Amen. We need to understand this, Hudson Church. We need to believe this, Hudson Church. We need to share this good news about the Messiah, about our big brother, about our friend, about the line of the tribe of Judah, Jesus the Christ. Can I get a hallelujah? Come on, can we get a hallelujah? Are we going to share about the risen Jesus? Come on, Hudson Church. Uh, don't take it as just another event. you got the power in Jesus' mighty name. So Hudson Church, as we close for today, I want to, on behalf of God and the Holy Spirit, a blessed resurrection day today and every day from now on. Not once a week, but every single day from now on in Jesus' name. Did we learn something? Can we clap for Father God?